All right guys, in today's episode, we are gonna talk about how to prep for step three, but doing it during your residency. Let's get into it. All right guys, welcome to the MD Journey, a channel completely dedicated to helping you succeed on your medical journey and doing it with less stress. My name is Lakshmi, an internal medicine physician and resident in training. And here on this channel, we make videos all about helping you on your pre-med, your medical school, and yes, your residency journey. So if you guys are new here to the channel, definitely consider hitting that like and subscribe button. In today's video, we are talking about step three and how to prepare during a busy residency schedule. Now this is going to be a new addition in the video to our step three series. So if you guys wanna check out the old ones, go ahead and check out the playlist down below. We talk about resources and planning as well as my own prep and reaction. But in this video, I really wanna just kind of give you a framework on how to approach studying for step three. So the first thing is really just understanding test day is two days. Most people will have a few days to a week between their two days of their exam. One for a mental break, and two, to also make sure that they can study for the second part of their exam, which also includes the clinical cases, which is unique to step three. So once you understand that the two days usually will have some gap in between, you wanna make sure that one, you're taking the test itself during a lighter rotation. I personally took it over Thanksgiving weekend, so I took it on a Saturday and took my second part of my exam on a Monday, so I had that Sunday and the rest of Saturday evening off. And you wanna also make sure that not only are you taking the test on a lighter rotation, but ideally you're studying for the test on a lighter rotation. This is one mistake I personally made where I went ahead and scheduled my test while I was finishing up an ICU rotation. So my ability to study effectively had gone down and up depending on how busy it was. And so that really is going to have a role in how well and effective your studying is. And so if you can help it, maybe look at a time throughout your calendar where you potentially you're not on call, or maybe you even have your weekends off or you just have a good amount of predictable days off so on the days that you're busy well maybe you lose a studying day there but on the days that you're off you can potentially make up for it and potentially even do more and as a bonus tip try to get your step three out of the way as quickly as possible definitely doing clinical rotations in your intern year uh, whatever specialty you're in will help you out but you also are likely to forget the things that aren't unrelated to the field that you're going into. So if you're a medicine physician like me, and you're probably gonna forget all the ob guy knology you learned during medical school, so it's probably more advantageous that you take it quickly into your, into your year and do the studying uh, while you're on a lighter rotation. But once we get that out of the way, next we're gonna talk about a study approach. Now the first thing you really wanna keep in mind is you wanna limit the kind of resources to really only doing questions. You don't have time to read and watch videos like you did back in medical school. You probably didn't have time to do it then. Well, you definitely don't have time to do it now. So really just limit your resources to questions. And I really only recommend using your world plus the cases that comes with it. And it just helps you simplify that this is all I really need. There's not much like ancillary or support resources that you have to add on to do well on step three. And in terms of how long you really need to study, it just really depends on how quickly you can get through the questions, the cases, as well as doing a little bit of time at the very end for review, and weaknesses. And so as the making of this video, UWorld currently has about 1600 practice questions for all of their multiple choice sections. This doesn't include all the cases that they have on top of it, as well as other resources and exams. So it's definitely a lot, but I recommend that you try to get through as much, if not all of it as possible. So a nice way to break this down to be able to give you a very manageable study schedule is find that time of the year that ideally you'd like to take step three, and then basically account for how many days a week you would study. So let's say you want to take the test in March and you have a lighter rotation in the end of March as well as February. So ideally that gives you the opportunity to potentially study five days a week. For a busier rotation, maybe three to four days. As soon as you can do that, then you can divide the 1600 by the amount of days or weeks in between and get an idea of how many questions you'll have to do per day. Now, obviously this is an average and this is a problem that I personally ran into where you'll see that, oh, I only have to do 40 questions a day. But there's gonna be some days where you either don't study because it was a longer day than you expected or you had no motivation to do so. But just keep in mind that if you do have days off on the weekends or a day off after a call day, ideally you can do two blocks or more questions on those days to make sure you don't get behind. But to avoid falling into a trap where many residents do where you only give yourself about a month and then it's during a busy rotation, sometimes you'll end up having to be in a situation where you have to do technically about 80 to 120 questions a day just to get through all of you old practice questions. And so usually those residents will tend to not finish all the valuable practice questions that you paid for, as well as potentially could help you do even better on the exam. And so to help counteract that problem, make sure you just look at your calendar first before scheduling the exam. That way you can give yourself enough time to start doing the you old questions without it becoming overwhelming. And as you're doing the questions, I really recommend just starting from random. There's no really benefit like you did 
did for first aid or step one where you have cardiovascular on day one, GI on day two, it's really probably more advantageous for you to have all of the questions of OB-GYN and neurology and pediatrics mixed so that way you can see the topics that you're strong and weak at. And as you're missing questions or as you're getting questions correctly but for the wrong reasons, make sure you're marking them because then throughout the last few weeks, you can go back to those questions or those question banks and make sure that you've reviewed that topic so you don't miss it on actually on test day. Now, one of the things that I was personally doing to keep track of all of my missed and kind of marked questions is I was using a method that I like to call the Excel method, which I have talked about on the channel before. Um, and if you guys are more interested in how I use it for step three, I'll link down below kind of the modules for our, our MetaLead Academy. But basically I was taking all the content that I was missing on UWorld or marking and making sure that I nicely kind of put it into an Excel sheet so that I could look at it during my review week going into the exam, as well as like the night before exam and feel comfortable that my weaknesses are no longer weak and I should be good for test day. Now, as you're going through your studying, really all I recommend doing is just doing the questions and getting through as many as possible and making sure you're not getting very far behind. But during the last few weeks, about three to four weeks away from your exam, I recommend definitely starting doing the cases, which will show up on the second day of your test. Now, you probably haven't done anything like these cases before because it's just a completely different interface. So I do recommend, you know, during the start of your prep, even before these last three to four weeks, of just doing the first four to five cases in your world so you can see what these cases will look like. Whether you choose to do these cases towards the end of your prep or kind of intermix is up to you. I found it to be a little bit hard doing them intermix because I found my focus was just kind of alternating, but I do recommend potentially just doing the first four to five cases so you can see an idea of what they look like, what the cases are like, you know, what type of things you have to consider, and then just keep that in the back of your mind during the last three to four weeks of doing a few cases a day. Now, they aren't very long cases, and honestly, you learn more by just doing the cases as quickly as possible and then reading the explanations on what type of things you should have done that you probably didn't and things that you did they probably didn't need to and using that whether it's through an excel method like i was using or something else to indicate okay on these problems these are the labs i need to order these are the problems i need to consider and just having come some type of kind of collection system that way when you're reviewing for test day we're like okay if i have a patient for dk on my cases these are the things i'm going to do so doing the cases a little bit early on to get familiar with that format and and then just going through them as quickly as possible so you can see as many as possible because really anything can show up on test day that includes pediatrics ob gyn general like hospital medicine as well as general outpatient medicine so doing as many of the interactive cases where you're actually the one who is putting in the orders as well as the practice cases where they just kind of walk you through the approaches but you don't actually do anything i recommend doing as many of those as possible now once you're getting about a week or two before your exam day a few things that i recommend doing about the last week of your exam prep, I would recommend definitely doing at least one self-assessment. Just make sure that you're doing okay on your practice questions, especially if you're going through the practice questions on UWorld as quickly as you may be. You may not get the highest percentage um, correct, and so that may kind of give you a little bit of anxiety. But I do recommend putting yourself in a test environment and doing like four question banks back to back using UWorld. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the self-assessment is a little bit more strict and harder in terms of grading probably than a real thing, but that's because the self-assessment doesn't include any practice cases. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't really pay attention to self to the score, but more about your stamina and your ability to work through those problems that may be about similar difficulty to the actual thing. And another thing I do recommend doing within the last two weeks of your exam is to just also start the biostats section of the exam prep. Now, it may seem like a lot of stuff is going on, you know, residency, doing the cases as well as the practice questions. And so really what I would do is as you're going into your last week of your exam, I'd kind of back away from the cases ideally you do a little bit more of them towards the last three to four weeks and so on the last week you can back away from how frequently you're doing them so you can do more of the biostats questions because really there's about like four to five questions per section and maybe sometimes even two or three so it's not a lot of questions itself but they do quiz you on the ability to understand some nuances so a lot of things you may be asked are things like sensitivity specificity things that we all hate other things like positive predictive value and likelihood ratios things that sound pretty familiar make it confusing and may get you a little anxious on test day you want to make sure you do those practice questions first on you world that way when it comes to test day you'll probably end up getting those right and the first day of your step one prep is definitely going to have a lot of biostats so you definitely will do more good for you by using that last week to go through that biostats questions in addition to going through your biostats questions have some systems so when you're done with your you world questions you can then review the weaknesses one thing that i 
intended on doing was doing all of my missed questions again, but I simply didn't have enough time. So I had a system where I was able to review my weak points through the Excel method in this case, which again, you guys can check out down below, but you can create any system you want that basically says, this is how I'm gonna go back to the topics that I missed. And I would do that definitely during the last week or two. So again, through the last week or two before the exam, definitely do one self-assessment, try to go through the biostats questions. Ideally, you've done of enough of the cases by now. If not, you can quickly get through them so you can back away so you can practice your weak points. And then when you actually do have your exam, you know, I would say during your first day where you have no cases, during those first few days before that exam, I would probably not do any more cases. I would just focus on the practice questions and the weak points. And then maybe during your kind of gap in between test number one and test number two is where I would do the cases. So if you have a week in between two of the exams, that's awesome. Just do the clinical cases now. If you only have a day like I did, then obviously you're going to have to do some cases during that last week. But keep in mind, you know, if you do want to have a good bit of a break in between both of them, then ideally try to split day one and day two by a week. But if you just want to get the test over with like I did, then you're just going to have to be able to get enough of the cases done during your initial prep. And so during that last week, you're not overwhelmed by doing cases and practice questions. So I know that was a lot. So a little bit of an overview, you know, obviously work a little bit backwards, look at your calendar, find a lighter rotation for both your test day as well as the prep. You know, one to two months is more than enough to being a very relaxing kind of prep. One month it may get a little stressful, especially the last few weeks, but that's totally up to you. Work backwards on how many weeks or how many days in a week you want to commit to for your world, and that's going to be how many questions you plan on doing. Whether you miss a day, make sure on the days off you do a little bit more to kind of catch up. Have some type of review system, whether it's the Excel method or something else, to keep track of the things you miss. And then during the last few weeks, whether it's the last three to four weeks, start doing some of the practice cases and try to get through as many of them as early as possible into those last three to four weeks. So that way that last week, you just do your self-assessment, the biostat section, and then ideally just the last few cases and reminders on your weak points. So then you're just ready for test day. But that guys is how I personally approach step three is personally how I would recommend you doing it without getting too overwhelming. If you guys do want the full access to the step three rapid mastery guide, as well as all the models and courses included in the Metalite Academy. That'll be linked down below and you get a full access for an entire week just for a dollar. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been a little helpful. If you do have more questions, drop it down below in the comments section. Also hit that like and subscribe button. One, obviously it supports the channel and two, just tells me that you guys enjoy this content and you want more just like it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you also enjoy the other step three videos that will be linked down below in the playlist. Thank you for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you on yours and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.